Next up, uh, we've got Jeremy, who's going to be speaking to us about yet another way to manage shared state and ELM SPAs. So please join me in welcoming Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about yet another way to manage shared state and ELM SPAs. Uh, my name's Jeremy Brown. Uh, I'm at a very small startup called Veradept. Uh, you can reach me by email at veradept.com. I'm at JH Brown on Elm Slack, uh, and I'm JH Brown 94 on Twitter. There are slide numbers on pretty much every slide except this one. So if you have a question about something and think of it, note the slide number as we go. Um, for context, the, the Elm project I'm working on, uh, my startup, uh, we're making a developer tool called DoomCheck for estimating software project size, uh, probabilistically. We generate graphs like these, uh, showing the probability curve, uh, or a higher impact visual if that's what managers or other stakeholders absorb best. Uh, architecturally, it's a boring software as a service. Um, do the actual markdown parsing, talk about that in a moment, uh, number crunching and go on the back end. The front end's doing all the document rendering, the charts, all the other UI stuff. Um, in this, you write the work plan in an extended markdown format uh, with estimate ranges in the curly braces. And so the Elm client, you got to be able to edit the markdown, render it as a good looking document, plot the graphs or the club to the head format. Um, all of this is done in a single page application uh, written in Elm along with login, sign up and all that. Uh, I, it is built using Elm UI and Elm charts. Uh, the design's real simple, uh, but because I'm kind of contrary, I wrote my SPA by hand rather than using a framework and wound up doing something a little different than I've been before for mapping a uh, shared state. Um, so, for background, uh, I assume we've got a, a range of experience here. Real quick, a single page application is a browser application which is downloaded on the first visit, appears to have multiple pages, but actually uh, implements some of those pages at least within the application, uh, so it doesn't have to go back to the server, uh, although it may pull more information from the server for a new page. So that's. Ironically, a single page application is multiple pages within one application. So, uh, you know, we're good at naming here in the web world. Uh, in Elm, this is implemented using browser application. Um, and the first few arguments are basically just browser document, right? Init, view, update subscriptions. Uh, and then there's these extra two that let you manage URL changes uh, within your application. Uh, and I'm not gonna dwell on that. Uh, many of you are already familiar with these and, and the rest of you know where to look this up. This is, this is pretty core. So uh, shared state, I think we've got a, a, a sort of casual definition here. It's in information that's used by multiple pages in SPA. Maybe it's a cached article that you don't wanna pull from the server every time or user information. But I wanna go a little deeper on this definition. Um, it's actually data and processes used by multiple pages in a shared page in a single page application. So what I mean by that is it includes uh, explicit state that's stored in something like a shared model. Uh, also implicit state in outstanding requests that are associated with, with uh, the shared structure. Uh, and, and those requests will eventually return shared messages in which message was selected to actually represent state. Uh, those messages also represent state transition messages for the, for the shared update routine. Uh, which represents the logic of transition. And then there's maybe a mechanism for clients, in particular page, to request additional state changes uh, and actions. And this is also called parent-child communication, various other things, depending on what you're reading, where you're reading it. So some of the design parameters uh, that we see are, where does the shared data get stored? How do messages get routed to shared update? Um, given where the, the model is stored, and how do clients request uh, additional changes so you know they can affect the operation of that state machine? So, looking at some of the the canonical ones, um, there's the Elm SPA example from Richard Feldman. Uh, shared model gets stored in the current pages model, right? And so that means that uh, each page has a function that can return the shared state when you're transitioning from one page to the next. Uh, how do shared messages get routed to shared update? Well, um, in, in this example, it's a, a fairly simple shared state. So there's, there's really only one change, which is just a complete replacement of shared. Uh, and it comes in via something called shared changes, which is basically shared subscriptions. Um, clients, the clients 
the pages subscriptions function has to call shared changes. Right, so they're getting all of the messaging and all of the state is being handled by each page individually, uh, sort of wrapping and unwrapping and delegating uh, to, sh to shared stuff. And then clients requesting additional state changes and actions uh, is very indirect in this. Again, there's not a lot going on, but there's API requests like login that ultimately causes a subscription port to have credentials. So the login request, when it comes back, uh, the, the user gets stored into local storage and another port fires and says, hey, there's a new user and that is a new session, a new uh, shared to be created and, and shared out. And just for terminology, I mean, if you actually go and look at this, um, shared is called session in this code base rather than shared. Uh, I, I'm trying to call it shared throughout in this presentation for clarity, but if you, if you dig around in here, it's session. Um, another one is Elm, uh, Elm Spa. Uh, and in this one, uh, shared information is stored on the main model directly. And so the main update uh, is responsible for for wrapping and unwrapping commands and subscriptions uh, uh, f with with a, a single message or with a uh, a, a dedicated message wrapper. Whereas this is all handled in in main. The pages don't have to worry about this. But when pages want to request an additional state change, uh, then they have to stuff it into a custom effect, which is basically just a wrapper on commands. And this actually puts that, that state change request into the runtime event loop, uh, which causes actually a one animation frame delay because it goes, goes out to the runtime and back. And it turns out uh, that, that turned out to cause a really surprising problem with storing form data directly in shared uh, because the input would get filled with one frame back in history data. Uh, so, one more sort of historic, not, I shouldn't call it historic, one more uh, 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 shared state implementation uh, is the, the Elm shared state package. Um, as with the, the prior one, the shared model gets stored on main model and uh, main handles wrapping and unwrapping uh, commands and subscriptions associated with shared. So that state machine all operates sort of out of main. Clients request additional state changes and actions with an out message. So page update functions return a third argument from a, from a set of messages. Uh, so the signature for a page looks something like this, uh, where out, out message is the defined set of actions you can request that aren't commands going sort of out to the runtime. So with that background, uh, here is shared state, yet another approach, shared state as the out message. Uh, so in this pattern, uh, main shares the stored state and, and routes the shared messages, same as the last couple, but each child's update function is going to actually return the shared state itself. So um, similar to our last one, uh, but in this case, shared is the out message. So looking at our design parameters real quick, where does the shared model get stored? It gets stored on main. How do the messages get routed? The same. They're wrapped and by main, wrapped and unwrapped uh, in, in update and subscriptions. Uh, how do clients request additional state changes and actions? Well, they can call functions from the shared module to directly modify the shared data uh, and then return that modified shared uh, structure from the update. But that raises a question, how can shared send its own commands based on the changes requested by the client, those go. Um, and so that we'll look at a little to sort of illustrate how that's implemented here. Uh, so the way, you know, we've got a main Elm, it, we've got a couple imports. Um, oh, I, I've taken all of the individual pages and put them down, all of the dispatch to different pages is handled in a page module. So that keeps main very tidy. Uh, the model literally holds the navigation key the shared data and the page model. And then you go into the page module and, and it does the further dispatch to, to identify which, which page you're looking at. And that, that so the, 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 uh, the main uh, implementation turns out to be real simple with that structure. Uh, so we're gonna bounce back and forth a little bit as we walk through here. Over in shared, we have a, a fairly standard subscriptions update in it, right? We can run as a sort of uh, internal process. Obviously, there's not a view function here. It's shared state that, that other things might view or, or use. Um, 
and then in page dot elm itself um, you know there there are subscriptions view uh, subscriptions and views and we'll keep going through but but these both take the shared data as the first argument uh, and then within they'll dispatch on the specific page model type and delegate but the shared uh, data comes in as the first argument and then for update it not only comes in as the first argument but but goes out as the last element of the triple uh, similarly for in it uh, in it uh, takes a, the shared data, um, some route information that, that helps select which page we're routing to, uh, and uh, returns the, the page model, any commands, and the updated shared. So then given an example, uh, I was talking about maybe something that, that presents articles. Uh, so we've got a page article here, uh, an article page here. Um, this is our update signature, shared comes in, shared goes out. Maybe somebody's pressed refresh on this page. And so we're going to return. Actually, that didn't change our model. And we're not going to send a command ourselves because we're viewing the article from a shared cache on the shared uh, structure. So we're going to return a shared, which we've modified by calling shared fill cache and giving it the article ID. So that's the mutation we've performed on shared with a function from the shared module. So let's look at what shared, how shared would be implemented in this case. And, and let me just turn on the virtual laser pointer momentarily here. Um, we've got three lines in here. There's the cache that we're trying to fill or refill, which is just a dictionary from IDs, strings to articles. We've got any outstanding requests, which is similarly a mapping from IDs to remote datas, uh, which if you're not using this, you, you should probably at least check it out. But they, they represent loading, uh, failed, succeeded, or, or not asked. So this is a tracking your request state. And then down here is a list of commands. And the cool thing here is these commands are in terms of the shared messages. And so the implementation of fill cache, we're going to A, we're going to note, hey, we're going to, we're changing our requests. We're saying, hey, we're loading uh, this, this particular uh, article is in the loading state. And then we're going to add the command to the queue from our API, which is going to generate the command. Uh, and we're just going to uh, bolt it right under the front of that growing list. So back in main, uh, when, we, when we're updating, we get a message for a page. In this case, maybe it's the refresh pressed. First, we update the page. Right? We pass it the shared. We pass it the page message. We pass it the page model. We run it through something called apply shared which I'll show you in a moment, but you can kind of guess now that it's going to unpack that queue of shared commands. Uh, and the result of apply shared is your page model, a unified command, and, and the final version of shared. And then we can return, you know, the main model is now a package of, of the new page, whatever happened there, and the new shared and the command, right? So this is, um, so, Last thing to look at then is what apply shared did. Right? So it took in uh, a model, a page command, and a shared. And it's returning the page model uh, a main level command and a shared model. And so we're naming the input shared as shared with Q. Right? And the first thing we're calling is shared extract command Q on shared with Q. And that returns a new shared and the command queue. At that point, we're returning the page it's pretty much unchanged. We're batching together the, any commands from the page properly wrapped. We're batching together any commands from the shared properly wrapped. Uh, and then this new shared that we got up here. Uh, and just for uh, the final bit here, uh, extract command queue simply empties the queue and returns a shared with the empty queue and also returns the actual queue itself reversed so that the commands will be executed or at least launched in order. So back at our, our design parameters, you know, the model gets stored on main. The messages get wrapped and unwrapped in main as well. Clients perform requests using functions from the shared module to directly modify shared. Uh, and those functions queue any commands internally in the shared and then main extracts and sends them when page update returns. Well, that's pretty much it 
um, the properties of this approach are, you know, okay, number one, compared to example, pages don't have to deal with uh, the shared data or the shared messages. Um, they can use functions directly, examine or modify shared. They can even uh, alternate these activities in pipelines. Uh, and then because of the internal queue, a page can't accidentally change the shared internal state but lose the associated commands or vice versa. Uh, if you remember at the beginning I said there's explicit state in shared and implicit state in the, the messages that, it, that, that may come in. Uh, and we want to keep those bundled together. So that's why they're, they're internal to shared. Uh, and that is literally it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll put in the shameless plug. If you have reason to think about software project estimation, please check out DoomCheck. Uh, but that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. Awesome. Please join me in thanking Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. OK, let's launch into questions. I think there was at least one question that was in maybe a couple of questions. So Matthew asks, question for later, how do you handle concurrent updates? Yeah, actually it was uh, answered quite lately, uh, just, uh -huh. just after I, yeah. So, but I had a follow-up question and I'm not sure you clarified it exactly. Um, so the issue when you uh, modify state in uh, return value, is that you can possibly modify a uh, different part of the state in different event handlers or something like that. So my question is, uh, does your shared module prevent um, your, the rest of your code to modify the shared data and to force them to queue into um, messages? Or how, how do you deal with that? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is, as I said, this is not part of a framework implementation, um, but I, uh, you know, I have implemented it as an opaque module. So you only uh, examine data or modify data using the functions exported from the shared module. Uh, okay, so for that, example, that, if you, uh, I guess if in your shared model you have, for example, uh, I don't know, um one uh, one counter and uh, you will never expose a function that directly increase the counter but expose a message to say increase the counter instead right well, no you, you um so you could kind of view the the shared module so so the shared module is is really got two apis of concern one is the API that, that is for the, the pages, the clients. So if I have something that's going to increase a counter, and that's all it does, um, I'll just have a function that increases the counter, right? Or if it increases the counter and sends a message to, uh, you know, an event log somewhere else, then it will, that function will increase the counter and add the, you know, the API call to increase that event counter to the internal queue. Um, okay. All and of those page-facing functions sort of combine that whatever action is supposed to take place uh, into one. Uh, but I'm not like exposing the record so that somebody could uh, sort of manually increment the counter without adding the event to to send the increment event uh, log. Right. But if you say you have a function that is able to do that do that increments like if you have a function that take a shared return a shared and increment the, the the counter you could have because because those function uh can leaves in can live in can, can they give in the view actually or so or nope the view does not return uh so if we if we look at the page here the view does not return shared only update and uh, init can return shared. Uh, okay, okay, that was what I was missing. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, lovely. Well, join me once more in thanking Jeremy. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you.